Hello, everyone. This is Professor He. Nice to see you again. The topic of this task is about the breathing cycle with intercooling, reheating, and regeneration. A schematic of the physical arrangement and the TS diagram of an ideal two stage gas turbine cycle with intercooling, reheating, and regeneration are shown in the figure and figure 1035. The gas enters the first stage of the compressor and stage 1 is compressed isotropically to an intermediate pressure P2 is cooled isobarically to stage 3 and is compressed in the second stage isentropically to the final pressure P4 and stage 4 the gas enters the regenerator where it is heated to T5 isobarically. In an ideal regenerator, the gas leaves the regenerator and the temperature of the turbine exhaust, that is T5 equals T9. The primary heat addition process takes place between states 5 and 6. The gas enters the first stage of the turbine at stage 6 and expands asentropically to stage 7, where it enters the reheater. It is reheated isobarically to stage 8, where it enters the second stage of the turbine. The gas exits the turbine at state 9 and enters the regenerator, where it is cooled isobarically to state 10. The cycle is completely by cooling the gas to the initial state. The work input to a two-stage compressor is minimized when equal pressure ratios are maintained across each stage. It can be shown that this procedure also maximizes the turbine work output. Thus, for base performance, we have the network of a gas turbine cycle is the difference between the turbine work output and the compressor work input and it can be increased by either decreasing the compressor work or increasing the turbine work or both. It was shown in Project 9 that the work required to compress a gas between two specified pressures can be decreased by carrying out the compression process in stages and cooling the gas in between, that is, using multi-stage compression with intercooling. As the number of stages is increased, the compression process becomes nearly isothermal at the compressor unit temperature, and the compression work decreases. Likewise, the work output of a turbine operating between two pressure levels can be increased by expanding the gas in stages and reheating it in between, that is, utilizing multi-stage expansion with reheating. This is accomplished without raising the maximum temperature in the cycle. As the number of stages is increased, the expansion process becomes nearly isothermal. 
The foregoing argument is based on a simple principle. The steady flow compression or expansion work is proportional to the specific volume of the fluid. Therefore, the specific volume of the working fluid should be as low as possible during a compression process and as high as possible during an expansion process. This is precisely what intercooling and reheating accomplish. The bankwork ratio of a gas turbine cycle improves as a result of intercooling and reheating. However, this does not mean that the thermal efficiency also improves. The fact is, intercooling and reheating always decrease the thermal efficiency unless they are accompanied by regeneration. This is because intercooling decreases the average temperature at which heat is added, and reheating increases the average temperature at which heat is rejected. This is also apparent from figure 1035. Therefore, in gas turbine power plants, intercooling and reheating are always used in conjunction with regeneration. If the number of compression and expansion stages is increased, the ideal gas turbine cycle with intercooling, reheating, and regeneration approaches the Erikson cycle as illustrated in the figure, and the thermal efficiency approaches the theoretical limit. However, the contribution of each additional stage to the thermal efficiency is less and less, and the use of more than two or three stages cannot be justified economically. Okay, that's all for this task. Thank you very much, and see you next time. Thank you.